In 1992, in Madras, I asked a question to my teacher, TKV Desikachar, at the end of a lengthy interview. I asked him, what is the future of yoga? The essence of his answer was as follows. I think the future of yoga is in the hands of those people who are concerned about the future of yoga. People like you, Leslie, for example. We Indian teachers, we are the first people who spoke about yoga. We are the people who originally opened the eyes and ears and minds of people to yoga. But speaking today, in Madras, in my own culture, I cannot envision the future of the United States. It is very difficult. My culture is different than America's. Even when I know so much about the West, I am very much an Indian in my heart. As an Indian, I may not be able to do justice to the future of America. So I always feel that the future of yoga in America is safer in the hands of Americans, perhaps much more so than in my hands, because I am a stranger to America. And then, when we speak about the future of yoga, we are talking about the future of man. This is very important. We are not talking about the tradition of yoga for the future. We are concerned about the future of man. This is all I would say. Let the future of American yoga be in the hands of those Americans who are concerned about the future of man. Now, when Desikachar expressed this beautiful confidence that sincere students could carry yoga into the future for themselves, I'm pretty certain he wasn't thinking about things like beer yoga, cannabis yoga, doga, broga, goat yoga, pig yoga, hot nude yoga, etc., etc., ad infinitum, ad nauseum. So all I can offer is my personal perspective developed from four decades of watching yoga transform from an obscure, somewhat weird hobby to a multi-billion dollar a year industry that shows no signs of slowing down. When I hear about the latest commercialized permutation of yoga, do I have a reaction? Sure I do. Things like goat yoga and beer yoga are not exactly my cup of tea, but the fact that I have a re negative reaction is not the point. My yoga practice has shown me that it's possible to take the space of a breath between my reaction to something and my need to act upon something. The truth is, all these things with the word yoga attached to them are clearly someone's cup of tea, and that's all that matters. If the prospect of being buzzed on beer or weed or taking your dog with you into class or having a goat climb on you once you're in class, if that's what it takes to get you on a yoga mat, then I think that's actually a good thing. Just as long as once you're on that mat, you're being asked to move your body, your breath, and your mind in a more integrated way than perhaps you've ever done before. That is what has the potential to permanently transform your life for the better. It certainly did for me 40 years ago when entering a carpeted room with filled with incense and chanting and Hindu statues was just as much a weird novelty then as it is now to enter a room filled with yoga mats, rope walls, aerial hammocks, space heaters, goats, dogs, pigs, or naked bodies. What I've come to realize is that my tiny slice of the yoga industry pie will probably never get bigger as a percentage of the overall pie, but it does get a lot more nourishing the bigger the whole pie becomes. So if just one student out of 10,000 in some of those preposterous classes gets inspired to eventually find their way to something closer to what I recognize as yoga, my focus needs to be on that one person, not the other 9,999. What's the future of yoga? It's big and bright and, and messy and sublime and wide and deep as long as it stays free to innovate, to experiment, to succeed and to fail. As the kind of American who does care about the future of man, I've been fighting to preserve that freedom of the market to create the biggest possible pie for everyone. As long as it stays free, yoga will be just fine, and it doesn't need us to protect it from people with whom we disagree. If you consider yourself to be the kind of yoga purist who takes issue with beer yoga, instead of railing against it or trying to prevent people from teaching it, focus your energies on putting out a better product and educating the public about it. Thanks for listening.